Sure. As a boy, I remember driving in the car with my father and seeing individuals on the roadside who had found themselves in difficult circumstances or who needed help. My father would always make the comment, pobrecito, which means poor little one. On occasion, I watched with interest as my father would help many of these people, especially when we would travel to Mexico to see my grandparents. He would typically find someone in need and then go privately and provide that help that they needed. I later discovered that he was helping them enroll in school, buy some food, or provide in some way or another for their well-being. He was ministering to a poor little one that came across his path. In fact, in my growing up years, I cannot remember a time when we did not have someone living with us who needed a place to stay as they became self-reliant. Watching these experiences created a spirit of compassion towards my fellow man and for those in need. In Preach My Gospel, it states, you are surrounded by people. You pass them on the street, visit them in their homes and travel among them. They are all children of God, your brothers and sisters. Many of these people are searching for a purpose in life. They are concerned for their future and their families. Throughout the years in serving in the church, I've tried to seek after those who needed help in their lives, both temporally and spiritually. I would often hear the voice of my father saying, Pobrecito, poor little one. In the Bible, we find a wonderful example of caring for a poor little one. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them, then entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alm. And Peter, fastening his eyes on him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. In reading this account, I was intrigued by the use of the word fastening. The word fastening means to direct one's eyes, thoughts, or look intently at. As Peter looked at this man, he saw him differently than others. He looked past his inability to walk and weaknesses and could discern that his faith was adequate to become healed and entered into the temple to receive the blessings he was seeking. I noticed that he took him by the right hand and lifted him up as he assisted the man in this way. The Lord miraculously healed him and his feet and ankle bones received strength. His love for this man and a desire to help him caused an increase of capacity in ability in the man who was weak. While serving as an Area 70, I reserved each Tuesday night to do ministering visits with the stake presidents in my area of responsibility. I invited them to make appointments with those who were in need of an ordinance of the gospel of Jesus Christ or who were not currently keeping the covenants that they had made. Through our consistent and intentional ministering, the Lord magnified our efforts and we were able to find individuals and families who were in need. These were the poor little ones who lived in the different stakes where we served. On one occasion, I accompanied President Bill Whitworth, the president of the Sandy Canyon View Stake, to do ministering visits. He was prayerful about whom we should visit, trying to have the same experience as Nephi, who was led by the Spirit, not knowing beforehand the things which he should do. He demonstrated that as we minister, we should be led by revelation to those who are most in need, as opposed to just going down a list or visiting people in a methodical way. We should be led by the power of inspiration. I remember going into the home of a young couple, Jeff and Heather and their little boy, Kai. Jeff grew up an active member of the church. He was a very talented athlete and had a promising career. He began to drift away from the church in his early teenage years. Later, he got into a car accident, which altered the course of his life. We became, as we entered into the home and became acquainted with, Jeff asked us why we came to see his family. We responded that there were about 3,000 members who live within the state boundaries. I then asked him, Jeff, of all the homes we could have visited tonight, tell us why the Lord has sent us here. With that, Jeff became emotional and began to share with us some of his worries and some issues that they were dealing with as a family. 
we began to share various principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We invited them to do a few specific things that might seem to be challenging at first, but in time would bring great happiness and joy. When President Whit then President Whitworth gave Jeff a priesthood blessing to help him overcome his challenges, Jeff and Heather agreed to do what we invited them to do. About a year later, it was my privilege to watch Jeff baptize his wife, Heather, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They are now preparing themselves to enter the temple to be sealed as a family for time and all eternity. Our visit altered the course of their lives, both temporally and spiritually. The Lord has stated, Wherefore, be faithful. Stand in the office which I have appointed unto you. Succor the weak, lift up the hands that hang down, and strengthen the feeble knees. And in doing these things, thou wilt do the greatest good unto thy fellow beings, and wilt promote the glory of him who is your Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Apostle Paul taught a key element in our ministering. He taught that we are all the body of Christ, and members in particular, and that each member of the body is needed to ensure that the entire body is edified. He then taught a powerful principle that entered deeply into my heart when I read it. He said, Much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Hence, in each ward and branch we need everyone, those who may be strong and those who are perhaps struggling. All are necessary to the vital edification of the entire body of Christ. I often wonder who we are missing in our various congregations that would strengthen us and make us whole. In 1849, Brigham Young had a dream where he saw the prophet Joseph Smith driving a large her herd of sheep and goats. Some of these animals were large and beautiful. Others were small and dirty. Brigham recalled looking into the prophet Joseph Smith's eyes and saying, Joseph, you've got the darndest flock I ever saw in my life. What are you going to do with them? The prophet, who seemed unconcerned with this unruly flock, simply replied, Brigham, they are all good in their places. When President Young awoke, he understood that while the church will gather a variety of sheep and goats, it was his responsibility to bring all in and allow each of them to realize their full potential as they took their places in the church. Brothers and sisters, the genesis of my talk came as I thought deeply about one who is not engaged in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. For a moment, I'd like to speak to each one of them. Elder Neil A. Maxwell taught that such individuals often stay proximate to, but do not participate fully in, the church. They will not come inside the chapel, but neither do they leave its porch. These are they who need and are needed by the church, but who in part live without God in the world. I would echo the invitation of our beloved President Russell M. Nelson as he first spoke to the membership of the church. Now to each member of the church I say, keep on the covenant path. Your commitment to follow the Savior by making covenants with him and then keeping the covenants will open the door to every spiritual blessing and privilege available to men, women, and children. He then pleaded, quote, Now if you have stepped off the path, may I invite you with all the hope in my heart to please come back. Whatever your concerns, whatever your challenges, there's a place for you in this, the Lord's church. You and generations yet unborn will be blessed by your actions now to return to the covenant path. I bear witness of him, even Jesus Christ, the master minister and savior of us all. I invite each of us to seek out the pobrecitos, the poor little ones among us who are in need, is my hope and prayer in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>